Welcome to Jomega Virtual Learning. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about a unique way of solving quadratic equation. Please share this channel with your friends and subscribe to it if you haven't done so. And click the notification button. Right, so apart from learning a new method of solving quadratic equation, you're also going to deepen your knowledge of expressing expressions using difference of two squares. And like I said, you might have been taught factorizing, completing the square, and using the formula for solving quadratic equation, but you're going to learn another unique method. Let's review difference of two squares because it's going to be a major part in our solution today. So how do you express this using difference of two squares? In case you've forgotten how to do this, the easy way is to express this as difference of two squares. You square the first term, you square the second term, and put a minus in between the two. As the name suggests, it's difference of two square terms or number. So a squared is a squared, b squared is b squared, a squared minus b squared. 2x squared will give you 4x squared. y squared will give you y squared. So that will give you 4x squared minus y squared, and so on. Now I want you to be very careful here for the last two. It's negative x all squared minus y squared. Don't be put x squared. I know negative x squared gives when you multiply negative x by negative x, you get positive x squared. But remember, we just want to get an exact x squared because if you make it x squared, square root of x squared will either be positive x or negative x, but I want it to be the negative x. That's why I want to keep the former. So take note of this so that when you get a question where it's like this negative number, you use it as it is, like this one, negative 7x all squared. Don't make it 49x squared. Okay, so this is how we express the difference of two squares. Okay, I'm now going to use factorization to solve this equation, then use it to develop the new method. So to factorize, you have x minus 6, x plus 2, equal to 0, and we solve, and x is equal to 6, and x is equal to negative 2. We call these the roots of the equation. Now let's sketch the graph. Don't worry about what I'm doing. The sketching of the graph and everything is not part of the new solution. It's just to develop the solution. Now I have my roots as negative 2 and 6, my intercept as negative 12, and it's a positive graph, so it's U-shaped coefficient of x squared is positive. Okay. I'm going to give some rules here. First, the properties of quadratic graphs, when we have ax squared minus bx plus c, and where the coefficient of x squared is 1. Whenever you have coefficient of x squared equals to 1, always the product of the roots is always equal to your c value. Let's check. 6 times negative 2, negative 12. Always. You can try 1 and say. Always the product of the roots will give you the constant number, including the sign. Second feature. When you find the average of your roots, you will always it will always be equal to a negative half of the value of b. The average of the roots will always equal the negative half of the b value. 6 minus 2 is 4. Divided by 2, you get a positive 2. Now, what is negative half of negative 4? It's positive 2. To do a negative half of a number, just divide the number by negative 2. So this is how we begin the new solution. 2 is my average, and now this average sits in the right middle of negative 2 and 6, which means that if I add a number to my average, that will give me my 
first root and if I take the same number from my average that will give me my second root. This will help me create an expression for the roots. And knowing the expression for the roots by my second property when I multiply the roots I will always get my constant. So I'm going to form the expression for the roots. 2 plus k 2 minus k. That is the expression for the roots. Second, I'm going to multiply the roots and set it equal to my constant. Then I'm beginning to solve it. So the rules are first divide your b value by negative 2. Use that answer to express the roots as an expression. Multiply the roots, set it equal to the constant and solve for the k and that will help you solve the equation. So we're going to solve for k. Once you multiply the roots and set it equal to the constant, we have a difference of two squares. So on the left hand side, represent with the difference of two squares. That's what you have. Solve for k. k will be squared will be equal to 16. And if you want to find k, square root of 16. So I know k is plus or 4, but don't worry about the plus or 4 because you're looking for a line the length of a line so we don't really need the plus or minus even the plus or minus is even catered for in our roots so it doesn't really matter so square root of 16 is 4 so if you know k is 4 then your roots will be 2 plus 4 for one and 2 minus 4 for the other and that's exactly what we got for our answer so to summarize divide your b value by negative 2 Use that answer to form the roots as an expression. I mean, the, the answer plus k, the answer minus k. Multiply the roots and set it equal to the constant. Solve for k. Once you know your k, put it back to the roots. Done. So let's look at an example. This is very good for solving complex equations, and we'll, I'll explain to you when we get there. So I have this x squared minus 5x minus 8 equals 0. First is to find my average by dividing negative 5 by negative 2. So the average negative 5 by negative 2 that will give me positive 5 over 2. 5 over 2 is my average. I'm going to form an expression for the roots. So 5 minus 5 over 2 plus k, one root, 5 over 2 plus k one root so these are my roots second so multiply the roots and set it equal to what eight and work it out use difference of two squares for the left hand side five over two all squared minus k squared now solve for k five over two all squared will give you twenty five over four minus k squared equals negative eight now solve for k. So 25 over 4 plus 8 equals k squared. You add 8 to both sides. You add k squared to both sides. That's what I've just done. Now work this fraction. 25 over 4 plus 8. k squared is 57 over 4. Square root both sides to find k. Right, so we know our k is root 57 over 2. So our answer will be 5 over 2 plus root 57 over 2 for 1. 5 over 2 minus root 57 over 2. And you can simplify your answer. So the first one is 5 plus root 57 over 2. Second answer over 2. And if you as you use calculator for significant, significant figures, you can now work this out using the calculator. Three significant figures will give you 6.27 and negative 1.27. Done. Let's try another example. Now, you realize that it's not equal to zero. So you need to rewrite the whole thing equal to zero by taking away 14 from both sides. Now, if you take away 14 from both sides, 
this is the new equation you're going to have okay divide your b by negative 2 that's 1 divided by negative 2 that will give you negative half or negative 1 over 2 use that to set up the roots expression negative or negative half plus k one root negative half minus k one root now multiply the roots and set it equal to negative three not this one we are using this one now use difference of two squares for the left hand side so this negative half all squared minus k squared equals negative three then solve your equation negative half all squared is one fourth one quarter minus k squared equals negative three add three to both sides add k squared to both sides that's what you have a quarter plus three so you have 13 over 4 equals k squared find square root on both sides so k is root 13 over 2 so you go back to your roots and replace k with root 13 over 2 so our answer is negative half plus root 13 over 2 for the first one negative half minus root 13 over 2 for the second one and you can simplify it as such and calculator will work the rest for you negative 2.30 0 0.30 because three significant figures and the next one is 1 1.30 done okay look at this one if you remember what I said earlier on this approach works really well when the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1 but this one is equal to negative 1 so we have to manipulate the expression by dividing by negative 1 divide through by negative 1 so when you do that this is what you're going to have negative 3 plus 10x plus x squared equals 0 done so we can now begin b is 10 divide by negative 2 so our b divided by negative 2 is negative 5 use negative 5 to create your expression for the roots negative 5 minus k negative 5 plus k now multiply the roots and set it equal to constant negative 3 use difference of two squares for the left hand side negative 5 or squared minus k squared now solve it negative 5 squared is 25 add k squared to both sides add 3 to both sides and you know 25 plus 3 is 8 and square root of 28 is 2 root 7 2 root 7 4 times 7 is 28 square root of 4 is 2 square root of 7 is 2 root 7 so 2 root 7 we know our k as 2 root 7 so our root will be negative 5 plus 2 root 7 and negative 5 minus 2 root 7 so that's our roots we leave our answer in a search form because that's what the questions expect us to do I hope you're getting hang of hang over a uh, hand over this method right now this is equation with big numbers so we can do it but we want x squared to have a coefficient of 1 so we divide through by 19 that's what we have the average negative 124 over 19 divided by negative 2 that will give you 62 over 19 if you work it out positive 62 over 19 use that to create your roots expression plus k with it and minus k with it multiply the roots and set it equal to the constant minus 224 over 19 difference of two squares for the left hand side 
62 over 19 all squared minus k squared equals negative 224 over 19. evaluate that that's what you have so now add 224 over 19 to both sides and add k squared to both sides simplify this session find the square root on both sides so k is 90 over 19 but you know your roots is 62 over 19 plus k so all you need to do is substitute k and that gives you your root for the answer so the first one when you work this out it gives you 8 the second one gives you negative 28 over 19 so we've still been able to use this method to solve complex equation another one this is where it becomes so complicated where we have uh, the equation involving fraction but so the problem is simple we can still use this method to solve it we first have to divide negative 2 over 3 by 2 by negative 2 sorry it's negative half that will give you one third create your root one third plus k one third minus k multiply the roots and set it equal to negative 1 over 4 because that's the constant difference of two squares for the left hand side 1 third squared is 1 over 9 now add k squared to both sides add a quarter to both sides then simplify 1 9 1 over 9 1 over 4 find the square root on both sides so you have root 13 over 6 because root 36 is 6. Go back to your roots, replace k with the answer root 13 over 6. So our first root is 1 over 3 plus root 3 root 13 over 6. And if you work it out, simplify it as 2 plus root 13 over 6. Leave as a set form. You just have to work this out. Denominator is 6, work it as a fraction. Second one. 1 over 3 minus root 13 over 6. When you work it out, it's 2 minus root 13 over 6. So even with fractions involving equation, we are still able to use this method. Let's try one more. Where everything except the constant is a fraction can still be done. We just want to make the coefficient of x squared equals to 1. That could be done by multiplying through by what? 3. Multiply every term by 3. So we have a new equation now. Divide 3 over 4 by negative 2 for your b. That is negative 3 over 8. Create your roots. Negative 3 over 8 plus k. Negative 3 over 8 minus k. It doesn't matter which one comes first. Minus or plus doesn't really matter. So it could be negative 3 over 8 minus k first. It doesn't really matter. Multiply the roots and set it equal to the constant of negative 3. Difference of 2 squares for this. Negative 3 over 8 all squared will give you 9 over 64. Now add 3 to both sides and add k squared to both sides. 9 over 64 plus 3 work that out. Find square root on both sides. So we know k to be root 201 over 8. Mind you, root 64 is 8. That's why it's root 201 over 8. Replace k with root 201 over 8. So given this as our root, our first root will be negative 3 over 8 plus root 201 over 8. Simplifies as negative 3 plus root 201 all over 8. Our second root simplifies as negative 3 minus 200 and root 201 all over 8. Done. 
And that brings us to the end of this lesson. So just to summarize, all you need to do is check that the coefficient of x squared is 1. If it's not equals to 1, you might need to manipulate the equation, either by multiplying through or dividing through, depending upon the nature of the equation. Then always divide the b value by negative 2 and use the answer to create an expression for the roots. The expression for the root is just the answer minus k, the answer plus k. Multiply the roots and set it equal to the constant. Then all you need to do is difference of two squares, use it to solve the equation for k, and replace or substitute k into your roots expression, and you are done. Thank you very much. Subscribe to this channel and share with your friends. And any comment that you want us to use to make the video better is welcome. Thank you very much.